Everything. Well, Miss Cameron, we'll be landing in a few minutes. Got all your outfits together? Almost everything's ready, Captain Marshall. Listen, why don't you give up this plan and, and turn back? But there's no place to turn back to. Why, there's a home in all the South that wouldn't welcome the daughter of Colonel Cameron. True. We can hardly become potential visitors. It's a tough proposition, girl. This pioneer life in a savage wilderness. We realize that, Captain Marshall, but we must keep the family together. Honey girl wants to stay with the sister Ruth, doesn't she? And our brother Dave's almost in man grown. Ruth is right, Captain. The Cameron tribe must stick together. Say, you used the fella I want to see. I want to play some more of that shell game. Have you got any more money? Oh, sure I got some money. Where'd you get that? From my mother-in-law. She lent it to me, but she don't know it. <laughs> Here, I'll meet you below deck. Get along. Don't forget, every day for you. Are you still determined to be a sturdy pioneer? Quite determined, Mr. Thorpe. I've told you about my plantation in Louisiana. It must be wonderful. Miss Cameron, those lands and servants are yours. If you'll take me with you. Oh, I do thank you, but as I've said before, it's, it's quite impossible. Goodbye, Mr. Thorpe. Now, if they win, I'm going to keep it. But if they lose, I give my mother-in-law half. <laughs> Come on, Tim. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Here we are again. Well, Gussie, you want to see the elusive little ball under the shell. Here you are. Now, it's bound to be under one of them. There's one, there's two, and there's three. Now, we'll shuffle them just a little bit, just to confuse you and take your choice. Mm. Now, wait, they show you. Here, I bet you two dollars. Two dollars. Nothing. I always do that for good luck. <laughs> <laughs> now, wait, they show you. Now, what? <laughs> ah, you see, Gussie, the hand is faster than the eye. Better luck next time. Oh, here. Who wants to buy my mother-in-law's stocking? Scott! Oh, there you are. What do you mean by spending my money? My mama, I'm going to give you a Give me my money. Give it to her. Hurry up. Give me the rest of it. Why, madam, that's my own money. That's my money. No, no, mama, that's his money. Captain, I demand that that man give me my money. Hand it over. See, mama, didn't they tell you we would win? Oh, you big loafer. Get out of here. Spending my life earning. Now, Thorpe, you get off my boat. If you set foot on it again, I'll put you in irons and land you at St. Charles on my way back. Davy, I think I'd better go find this paper that Lady Captain Howard has told us about. All right. Now I'm going to stand and stand and watch my mouth. Well, you take good care of it, Davy. I will. I'll be right back, honey girl. <laughs> it's a nice place, isn't it, Mama? It's terrible. Look at the mud. I'm going to go see if they can buy a horse. Come on, come on, I'll carry you over there. I don't want you to get your feet wet. That's it. Here we go. Come on, Abby. I don't want you to get your shoes all muddy. That's it. Come on. Here we go. Oh, stop laughing, will you, Abby? Now, you go here and bring Mama. Come on, Mama. I'll take you over, Mama. Come on, Mama. Come on, Mama. Here! Yeah. What are you trying to do? But, well, Mama, when I call you cross, so you won't get your feet wet. You? I'll cross my own mud. All right, then, Mama, but let me help you. That's it, Mama. Come on, now. Say, step on that board, Mama. That's it, Mama. Say, oh. hey, hey, come right back. Oh! Oh, God! Mrs. Briggs? Yes, miss? That's me. Well, I'm Miss Cameron. Captain Hollister told me to see you. 
friend of Captain Hollister? Yes, I am. Come right on in. Oh, now, I don't tell you pretty place. I live long. Oh, it's nice and cool in here out of the sun. <laughs> Now, you sit down and make yourself easy, and I'll brew you a cup of tea. Oh, that's awfully nice of you, Miss Rick. Thank you. You were Elise, ma'am. Elise? Yes, just thought I'd surprise her, sort Did of. Did you indeed? Let me tell you. If you'll light someplace, I'll tell you. Oh. Well, what is it? You're as pale as a ghost. Oh, it's nothing, Mr. Top, really. I... But there must be something oh, wrong. Nothing, just a, an unpleasant occurrence. I'm going to explain that play. There's nothing to explain. But I'm going to tell you anyhow. It seems to me you're forcing yourself on this lady. Is that how it seems to you? How else can I take it? It's nothing to me how you take it. But it matters a heap to me, ma'am, how you understand. Perhaps not. But if it concerns Miss Cameron, I'll demand an explanation. You will? Then speak your piece. Mr. Thorpe, will, will you please take me to my brother? With pleasure. I'll be looking for you shortly. Well, I won't be hard to locate. Hello, honey girl. Thank you so much, Mr. Thorpe. Great pleasure. Just think this wagon will be your home for the next six months. And after that, the cabin in the wilderness. My mind is made up, Mr. Thorpe. We're going with the settlers. You know my brother, David? Yeah. Hello, Dave. How's you? <laughs> Howdy, boy. Hello, Zeke. Howdy, Bill. Hey, Jack. I've been telling you about this here boy, Coleman. He can heave a knife into a mark so big every time. Well, I'll bet you Buffalo hide to give him the left post back in here. Well, call the bet. Now, uh, here, show him, boy. Bless <laughs> now, wild heart. Oh, I've seen him do it a hundred times, eh, Bill? That's another buffalo hide you owe me, Jack. You remember, Bill, that time up for, on the Snake River? Oh, oh, I do. Say, boy, <laughs> I want to know about old Ben Grizzle. I hear the Indians downed him. Only it wasn't Indians downed him. How? Oh. The Renegade Whites done it. How oh, come? He'd been wolfing all winter. Yeah? Must have had two, three thousand dollars worth of wolf belt. Oh, easy, Ben. He was hacked up and stuck full arrow. Looked like engine work, all right. The wolf pelt was gone. If ever I find them hellhounds, I'll sure make them hunt their holes. Well. No, but who's that young buck over there with no hair on his face? That's, uh, Brett Coleman. He's very quick with his knife. Mm, where does he come from? He come from the plains, the mountains. He live with the Indians. He can throw a knife through the heart in 20 feet. He's the best shot in all this country. He knows everything. Mm, he'll know too much for his own good someday. Le conocen hasta en México. Uh, Vamos a tomarnos un trago. Yes. ¿Quieres comer? All right. If old Ben had lived, he'd be going on about 72 now, wouldn't he?
Injuns never done this. It was renegade white. And they've left their mark. Say, Zeke, who was that he grizzly that just went by? Well, that's Red Flack. He's bullwhacking for Wellmore. He's going to whack Wellmore's thing. Cheers, good order. You reckon you'll ever find out who downed old Ben? Just possible that a certain low-down coyote left his sign there. Hello, Coleman. Howdy, Wellmore. Changed my mind. I'll scout for that bull train after all. Well, that's a ray of sunshine. Shake hands before you change your mind again. Got a good wagon boss for the trip? Red Flack. A burly ruffian, but he can maul the toughest freighter on the plains into a pulp without even working up a sweat. He can do that, eh? Flack? Ha! <laughs> Why, well, he likes to do it. But he can run a bull train. Here he comes now. Uh, we won't. All right, it's chat. Likely you two have met before. Uh, I reckon not. Coleman's gonna scout for the train. And he understands that. And he's to have final say in all matters dealing with the Indians. Yes, well, who's got the final say about busting this bull train? He understands that you're the wagon yeah. boss. Another thing, another thing. Am I supposed to be witness? To them wooden head pilgrims well, crossing the plains? The more that goes along, the better it is for ah. them and you in case the Indians jump you. Well, all right. All right. Make it clear to him that I'm wagon boss. Oh, he understands that, Flack. Uh. Seems to be a right pleasant cut. He's a ruffian, but he's a real wagon boss. Likely he is. Must have done a big trade in wolf pelts this year. Yes, we had a big trade with the wolfers. Black sell you any of these? Black? Oh, he didn't do any wolfing last winter, I guess. What outfit did you buy the biggest bunch from? A fellow named Lopez came in about a month ago with goes on to five thousand dollars worth. Lopez, eh? I guess I don't know him. I signed him up as a bullwhacker on the train. You did, eh? I'll see you next year. Bring your scalp along back home. All right, goodbye. That's so. It certainly is. I don't know whether they're going to get to or not. I'm going to scout for that bull train. Good. Oh, Mr. Cameron, this is Mr. Coleman. Howdy, Mr. Coleman. How do you do, sir? Uh, he can tell you more about that country where you're going and what kind of an outfit you need than any man around here. Thanks. Wendy. Throw my bags in with yours and Zeke, will you? All right, I will. Tell Zeke I'm going along. All right, boy. Mr. Coleman, would you mind looking over my outfit? Certainly not. Uh, we'll go have a peek at it. Where is it? Right over there, sir. Honey, girl, it's time for your history lesson, dear. Now, uh, how many stars in the flag? Twenty-six. How many stars? Thirty. Now, you know better than that. There's thirteen. And what do they stand for? The 13 original colonies. Now, remember that. Now, who oh, discovered the Columbia Miss, River? Mr. Coleman, Robert this is my Ray. sister, Ruth. Honey girl, it isn't safe to be sitting in a rocking chair when there are certain persons present. I think you'll find we have everything. Plenty of guns, a rifle, and a fowling piece. How about ammunition? Plenty. One thing, I don't see any barrel. A barrel? Yeah, you'll need a water barrel. There'll be long stretches without water. Knew we'd forget something. I'll go get one. All right. What I was aiming to tell you was this. When I came into the, the ring... right next there had an extra one. Oh, uh, quick work, son. Say, it wouldn't be a bad idea to take two barrels. Suppose you go rustle another one. I'll do that. 
When I came romping into the rig's cabin... Come this way. Oh, well, that's fine. Looks like barrels grow on trees around here. Mr. Cameron, you better tell your sister to change that pretty dress. Won't get very far in that. Yes, sir. We're on some traveling clothes. Have a peek around here. We have a trailer. I like him better than Mr. Thorpe. Honey girl, we'll finish your history lesson. Yes. Oh, no, no. Well, you want to talk. Thorpe, you get back on the peensy bell and make yourself scared. If you're here when the boat pulls out, the boys will certainly lead your pony out from under you. <laughs> I had no intention of staying. I'll be on the peensy bell when she leaves. You see the jar. My goodness, I don't know what I'm going to do with you. Then I try again. Come on, here. Up you go, up. Oh, you stubborn yakers. I give you yabby well, yo, I bet you, young. Come on, up. Well, hello there, Gus. What you call that thing you got there? Oh, this name is Jack. Jack? Oh, yes. But that's only half of it. Well, see, he's only a half a horse. Well, <laughs> what's the matter? Can't you get him up? I don't know. I pull and I pull, but he won't come up. <laughs> Wait, wait, I got an idea. Say, what did you say to him then? <laughs> I told him a joke about my mother-in-law. <laughs> wait, you should come. Gus, what have you got there? Oh, this, this is my new horse. Uh, you sport him. You bought him? Sure. Say, yeah. <laughs> Watching the leaves. 
how to cut your mark on a tree so you won't get lost in the forest. And they taught me how to bury in in the snow so you won't freeze to death in the storm. And they taught me how to make a fire without even a flint. And they taught me how to make the best bow and arrows, too. You can teach me how to make cat poopers? <laughs> no, that's one of their own secrets. Well, boys, I guess we better get going. Oh, God, our Father, as you sit on high and look down on us poor mortals, forgive us, for heaven. I am about to lead these people into a wild and dangerous country. Give me strength and wisdom, oh, God, to lead them through. Mama, I got everything packed up in the wagon. How can I get in the wagon, you idiot? Now look, Asher, look, Mama. Put your seats up on there. That's it. Now wait. And if that's up, you go, Mama. That's it. Now one more foot up. Now up, Mama. Up, Mama. That's it. Up. Wait, Mama. You're sitting on my head, Mama. Please, that's it. Then you go. Get in. Get in, folks. We're going. Get up. We're going now. Get in about saving that pretty dress. You look so nice in it, it'd be a shame to spoil it.
Looking for anyone particular? Honey girl, a gentleman never comes to a lady's home when he isn't wanted. Out here, this wagon is our only home. Pony, that means that. Come on, you sis. What's the matter? Do you need to come in, you sis? Think of this fella, Thor. Uh, I've seen that fast walker somewhere as a four. Can't exactly just where. He uh, shoots the kind of a nasty look that you want to have, boy. Come on. We had a run in the first day. Yeah? No, he ain't no settler. Uh, and he ain't no bullwhacker. Uh -uh. Wonder what he come along for. <laughs> he come along to close that uh, Cameron girl. Mystified, Mr. Thorpe, why you came here instead of returning to your plantation. I've told you why I came. I induced Captain Hollister, an old friend of mine, to put back to shore, and I followed you. Yes, sir, I know that's what you told me, but I'm afraid you're a flatterer. Oh, on my honor, no. You got the truth about them. Hey, Lopez! The back is going to be mighty scarce later on. Not a thing, not a thing. Boy, I'm going back to a windy bill and get a slugger. Come on. Hey. Her name's Lopez, eh? Uh, Lopez, that's me. You and Black good friends, he tells me. Uh, Black and medium friends, 12, 15 years. You're out wolfing together last winter, eh? No, 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 wolfing. You know, good business. No money. And you didn't get many. No, not good. Funny, Wellmore said you sold him more furs than any other half dozen out there. No, he must be talking about someone else, not me. Well, no matter. See you often. Got a good bunch of bullwhackers, Black. That uh, Lopez strikes me as a good hand. Uh, you bet. Lopez can pound him along. You and him old friends, eh? Oh, Lopez and me? Nah, I never seen him till he signed on this trip. My mistake. Uh, I don't like this man both. Uh, if he asks after me, you tell him you never seen me till you signed on this trip. You're too late. Why? He just speak to me, and I tell him we was all friends. What? Ah, what do you use under your hair instead of brains? You need no brains. You got here. Ah, no. You're talking sense. <laughs> Let's go up to the right and hold. They 
Maybe she won't uh, talk with him. But she'll dance with him, eh? Only dance. On to the next and home. And lovely night. Turn him upside. Bring him up. Now you can. Go in and snagger away from him. I claim the faith. Well, Zeke. No, boy. Thorpe just stole my partner and left me dancing with myself. Yeah? <laughs> Say, boy, it just come to me a minute ago where I seen that there saw before. Where? Camped on the chimney with Black and Lopez. They're old friends. Are you sure of that? Yeah, Chuck. So keep your eyes peeled on him, son. I'm tired. I think I'll go to my wagon. All right, go to the Let me take you there. And to think this same moon is shining on my old plantation in Louisiana. All it needs is a lovely woman to preside there. Someday you'll find me. I have found the root. Oh, please, Mr. Thorpe, I've told you before that there can be no happiness without love. But love will come. I'm really tired, Mr. Thorpe. Do you mind if I go to bed? Good night. Good night. into dangerous country, Flack. So I'll be riding to the Pawnee Villages to pick up some Indian scouts. Yes? Well, you're likely to lose your scalp out there. I'll bet you a couple of wolf pelts I bring it back with me. <laughs> How long you be gone, Coleman? Three, four days, a week maybe. Well, back so soon. I thought maybe you wouldn't be coming back at all. And just why did you think that? <laughs> Well, after I sort of took the dark-eyed beauty away from you, I thought you might be decamping. <laughs> Listen, Thorpe. I never quit a job in the middle of the road. Oh, quite so, quite so. But after the girl quit you in the middle of the road... Say that again, Mr. Thorpe. I know who you are now. And I know why you quit the Cimarron country, too. Oh, well, no necessity to have quarrels among friends. Friends? You threw too wide a loop. Remember this. There are three of you. I'm not your friend. Yes. Uh, well, you let him scare you stiff. Not at all. Only an idiot, you know, presses a quarrel when the other man has a knife pressed uh, against him. Uh, good excuse. Wolf pelts, eh? What does that mean? Don't mean nothing. It doesn't to me, but it does to you. Yeah, where'd you get that notion? When he mentioned wolf pelts, you look as though he'd rammed a knife in you. <laughs> Not exactly what I'd call a poker face. Eh, uh, well, what of it? Oh, nothing. Only I'm beginning to understand why you don't like Coleman. Bye, Wendy. Zeke, I'll be seeing you in the happy hunting grounds, if not before. Good luck, boy. Bye. Well, Miss Ruth, I got some good news for you. What? I'm going to be away for a while. I'm going scouting. Wasn't that dangerous in the open country? Lord, no. I love it, especially now that it's spring. 
and everything so happy. Why, there's trees out there, big tall pines, just a reaching and a reaching, as if they wanted to climb right through the gates of heaven. And there's brooks, too, with the water smiling all day long. But the part I like best is the night. Lying out there beneath a blanket of stars, with that old moon smiling down on you. And every time you look up, there she is, sort of guarding over you, like a mother minding her young. Sometimes it's so beautiful that I just lie there, listening. Birds singing, brooks laughing, and the wind sort of crooning through the forest, like some great organ. Oh, I've always loved it. But I reckon I'm gonna be lonely this time. You know, you can get sort of used to having somebody not like you. And when they're not around, you miss them. Not liking you. That's why I reckon I'm gonna be lonesome. But I'll be thinking of you. Goodbye. And you just take care you don't lose yourself. Pete, is he leaving the train? Yes, miss. He's riding out to Pawnee Village. Well, how far are they? Oh, nigh on 100 miles. Wasn't that dangerous? Well, he's likely to lose his scalp before he gets there. But once in the villages, he's safe. So don't you worry about him, miss. What? Why should I worry about him? Uh, I don't know, miss. I don't know. But it seems like as if maybe you were. Not at all. He means nothing to me. No, no, of course not. <laughs> Good night. Good night, Pete. Hey, you got back here at last, eh? Yeah. There's plenty of buffalo sign out here, so I'll be riding out to pick up fresh meat. Yeah, uh, well, who's keeping you? I'll see you at the river crossing. Hey. Lopez! Lopez! Up! Yeah. You two have been waiting for your chance. Here it is. Go out on a buffalo hunt. Me? Nah. I kill hundreds of buffalo. Why should I go? Yeah. Get them cobwebs out of your brain. He means, Lopez. We might find better game. Watch him till he leaves the ponies, and then give it him in the back. <laughs> Hey, you pilgrims, come here. Come here. Mask them. Yes. Mask them. Yes. I'll shove the horses and the cattle right on through. Leave only the wheelers hooked to the wagons. Once you take to the water, well, there's every man and critter 
for himself, eh? Get out of here. Get out hey, of here, Mr. Gordon. Mr. Fleck, Mr. Fleck, uh, how can they get my mule Eustace across? Well, uh, get your mother-in-law to ride him, eh? <laughs> Mr. Bascom, Mr. Bascom, you know, Ed don't like that fella. No? He's the kind who will touch you on your back to your face and then laugh in your face behind your back. <laughs> and another thing, yes? if he had a mother-in-law like mine, he would never laugh. <laughs> The hunt was a great success. We bagged our buffalo. Hey. Oh. Did you get your meat, eh? <laughs> este es el mejor tiro que yo he visto. Ah. Good, good. Well, we better shove it off, then. Eh? Oh. Black said we could only use the wheelers. Black said. 
What does he know about water? He never took a bath in his life. Johnny! Where's the camera and wagon? I'll go greet the little fellow. Greet, eh? Well, Lopez and me will go greet the jug. <laughs> you take them from here on in, Dave. Shallow water. All right. Go back to my saddle. All right. coming over to help you. Thank you. We had the best of help. Help? Who? The matter, Lopez? Seeing a few goats? Me? No, no. Drive on into the corral, Dave. All right. Get in. Come on in. Get in there. Come on, Lord. I'll be seeing you three later about matters and things. Why, hello, old boy. Howdy, Zeke. Well, what happened? Pony stepped in a dog hole. Yeah? Well, I suppose a prairie dog shot that hole through your saddle and into your heart, eh? Nature. Who has gone from camp, Zeke? Sloppy Lopez come in during the night. In the early morning, sent a wagon out for the meat. Well, uh, nice mess you made of things. Not eh? at all. Two hundred yards running is considerable of a handicap. Besides, other days are coming. Now, well, don't you fool yourself. Here he is, here he is. Black, the engine's been sending up smoke signals for several days. Now. Yes, well, I see them. I'll skirmish around with the Pawnees for a few miles. Well, go on. There ain't no one keeping you. No, but you'd better keep Thorpe and Lopez here. Why? I got a feeling that if either one of them leaves camp, they'll never come back. What do you mean by that? Just the way it sounded. Hey, look now, look now, eh? Get the spear, one more fast. Engine? Try a long shot at him. No fire! The Cheyenne. They want a palaver. Oh, they look to me as if they're out for half. They will be if we take a shot at them. That'll mean war. I'll go out and palaver with you. Go on, go on. Maybe so you don't come back. Huh? Look how clearly his horse is acting. Yeah, he's riding zigzag. That's Indian sign that he wants to palaver. There's a chief riding out to meet him now for a powwow. See? This is Black Elk, an old friend of mine. Do they mean peace or war? Peace, as long as they march straight through the Cheyenne country without stopping to settle. Ah. 
Now that we're going to be friends, they'll probably bring their families over here to beg. So feed them well and treat them right, and we'll have no trouble. shouldn't be riding out here alone like this, away from the train. Why not? Because this is dangerous country, and anything might happen. You wouldn't care. Care? Me? Why should you care? Listen, girl. If anything happened to you, it'd be like throwing my heart to the wall. <laughs> Don't worry, it's Black Elk and some of his braves. <laughs> Come and squall. Come and squall. Are you saying that I'm your squall? Seems like that's what he's driving at. Well, you tell him that you don't want me for your squall. I've never told Black Elk a lie yet. He knows my tongue is straight. But what do you mean? Well, it wouldn't be true if I told him I didn't want you. It happens I do. And you've no better taste than to tell me that before all these savages? I'd tell you that in front of the whole world. This silly joke has gone far enough. Yes, sir. You take Honey Girl from here on down, Dave. A little easier going. Hold on. Oh, Careful, now, Miss Ruth, you cling on to me. Put your arms around my neck, Honey Girl. A little tighter. A little tighter. Just a little tighter.
I hate to see you at menial tasks. If we were only back at my old plantation in Louisiana, you'd have a dozen servants to wait on you. Let's turn back. Turn back, Mr. Soap? Oh. Why, oh, honey girl, didn't I tell you to stay away from the fire? Yes, and you told me not to be sitting on the rocking chair when Brett Coleman is around. 
Coleman. Howdy, Dave. You shot these turkeys. Well, don't you stand heavy to eat them? No, uh, I just had supper with the Bascoms. Sorry, Brick. Think I'll go hunt up old Zeke. How many is that for you, Wendy? Number 84. Uh, uh, here comes 85. Hello, Zeke. Hello, Wendy. boy. I smell turkey you're cooking. So all I got was a smell. Deal me a hand of them flapjacks. That's the way it's done, Gussie. My old arm's giving up. Now you try it. I'll get a pail of water. That's easy. Take him to the tip. The arm saw Zeke do that till he broke his arm. Yes, and you know someday my mother-in-law is going to talk so much, she's going to break her yaw. <laughs> <laughs> hey, boy, I wouldn't let my mother-in-law boss me around like that. Stand up to her like a man. Face her down, boy. <laughs> if it was me, I'd tell her what was on my chest. You got nothing on your chest but wind. <coughs> your old polecat. <laughs> I've just been talking with some trappers who come out of the southwest. They say the country they call California is wonderful. Yes, so I've heard. Why won't you come with me to a land like that? Are you going there? If you'll come with me. But what about your plantations in Louisiana? Oh. Well, <laughs> if we like California better, uh, we could sell my holdings and buy vast lands out there. <coughs> Well, if, if the continent offer me all that, but it can't be. I must join Davy. Oh, Dave. Dave, come over here. Black Elk here says that you and your sister were so good to him when he come in to visit that he wants to give you all them ponies. Oh, that's kind of them, Zeke, but we couldn't take their horses. Oh, of course you could. They got hundreds of ponies. He wants you to show him where to put them. Now, you go and throw them ponies in with your herd. Well, Zeke, you lying old coot. That engine buying Cameron's sister for Coleman Squall. <laughs> well, well, why not? Oh, Coleman find himself a squaw, eh? Dick, you old whiskered Cupid, you. <laughs> <laughs> I know the very sight of you. What have I done now? You've made me the joke of the plains. Me? Who else tried to buy me like an Indian squaw? You put me to shame before them all. My girl, you're imagining things. Oh, oh, oh. Zeke always told me women were damn funny. Mr. Salt, I've changed my mind. I'll go with you to California if you'll go at once. At uh, once? Why, yes, yes. Uh, I'll make preparations immediately. This is a fine state of affairs. This man Thorpe isn't all he claims to be. My mind is made up, Davy. We're going to California. Where's Clark? Hey! I just came in to tell you goodbye. Hey, goodbye? Well, where are you going? I'm going to take my outfit and leave you here. Hey, your outfit? All you got is one horse and two guns. No. The Cameron outfit's mine now. Oh, it is, eh? Yeah, we're going to California. So I'll bid you a fond farewell. No, you ain't. No? No. What do you suppose I grubs take you for, eh? So far, you've been a fizzle. One try, one miss. Oh, he's no longer in my way. Well, he's in mine. Well, tear him down yourself. Oh, I'd like to kick him into pulp. I'd like to break him in two like that. Well, why not? Uh, I don't mind fists or feet. Or even a gun. It's the way he throws that knife. Well, why should I risk it? Because you're a 
dead shot. You're a going to stick. You're a going to prove how good you are before you leave the fort. And if I don't. Well, if you don't, I'll tell that little filly there's a wide open noose waiting for you in every river town. Ah, uh, so you do your job before you leave the fort. Howdy, Henry. How are things, Coleman? Just fine. Say. Black Elk was telling me that all the Indians of the West were together to keep you all from passing through. So they tell me. Black Elk and Cheyenne is going west. The old powwow with the Shoshone. Yeah, Black Elk tells me that it's almost certain that the Cheyennes will declare war later. Likely. Old Pete Rubido was asking about you a while ago. Pete? Where is he? Camp Spring yonder with his new squaw. I think I'll ramble down and see him. Say, Henry, will you put a new uh, cap nipple on this gun? Sure will, boy. A new uh, trigger spring in the pistol. All right. I'll leave him with you while I go see Pete. Be ready when you come back. about to unite this loving and devoted couple in the holy bonds of wedlock. Hank Gillis, do you take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife? I do. Abigail Vance, do you take this man to be your lawful wedded husband? <laughs> she does. Flack, uh, you recollect as how Coleman done told you that if Lopez here or Thorpe done stayed off into the brush, they weren't likely as how never come back. Sure, uh, he made some kind of a bluff. What of it? Well, uh, Thorpe stayed out, and he ain't a never coming back. Hey? No. He done gone back to his old plantation. Yeah. Well, you won't go to California with Thorpe now. Why not? He and Coleman just met in the brush, and Coleman shot him. Are you sure? I heard the shot, and I saw Coleman standing there over him. It suits me, too. So he'll even do murder. And so I pronounce you man and wife. And may peace and happiness be yours. <laughs> There's been a murder. There's been a murder. Um, a murder? Where? Where, girl? Who? Coleman met Mr. Thorpe in the brush and shot him. That's a serious accusation, my girl. Are you sure? My brother saw it. Men, we can't have cold-blooded murderers among us. There's a man that shot Bill Thorpe down like a dog. Go back. Don't get her off. Get her off. Get her off. And just who accuses me of killing Thorpe? It, uh... 
It was Miss Cameron. You, eh? So you'd like to see me hang? Listen to me, you. This boy Coleman here just couldn't have killed Thorpe. Why not? Because he didn't have no guns on him. He left his and with Dutch Henry to be fixed. Mm. Coleman and Thorpe were out with the Cameron gal. If it wasn't Coleman, who was it who shot Thorpe? Since you're aiming to know, I'll tell you who done it. Who? I shot oh. that skunk myself. Coleman, a friend of his men, is lying to save his neck. What could Zeke have against a man like Thorpe? You want to know that? Too? Yes, I want to know that too. Well, I'm a telling you. I was camped out pretty close to you, and I heard that little powwow you had with Thorpe. Yeah, what are you driving at? Just this. When a man begins to do a lot of talking about hanging, he'd better make pretty sure as to who's going to decorate the end of the rope. Get my meaning? Well, Thorpe ain't nothing to me. It's no fair of mine. That's just what I was a thinking. Uh, and Coleman ain't going to do no scouting while I'm boss of this train. I'm leaving him behind. Oh, no. We're taking on a new scout. Yes, again, Slack. I started with this outfit, and I'll be with it at the finish. Who says so? I'm just telling you. I got two reasons. One is I told Wilmore I'd scout the train through. And the other is a little personal business I aim to transact at the end of the trail. See if you can figure out what that is, Slack. Coleman, the settlers are willing to push on. We'll follow you. What's all this talk about engines? It's true. The engines are gathering to the westward to stop us from going through. Engines have never yet prevented our breed of men from traveling into the Seton Sun. Go on. Lead the way. Well, get your outfits together. We're going. Never mind what you see or what you hear. Red Flack is still boss of the train. Get going! Gotta gather them up and shove them along. Charlie died, Coleman. We raised him from a cold. Tough boy. But we gotta battle it through. Yeah. 
Like crows and giants, Zeke. Yeah. Now, let's charge into it.
Let's go. They're right now. When they wheel back on the feet, loaded up and give it to them. Let's go. 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 Our good friends have perished here at the hands of the savages. Open your arms to them and care for our loved ones until we meet again on the other shore. Amen. Well, Zeke, old Wendy's gone on another trail. You see, you and me was. You and me was, uh... <clears throat> my baby! My baby! My baby! <laughs> my baby. <laughs> well, Zeke, I'm going to trail the engines and make sure they go back to their village. So you scout the train ahead and I'll pick it up in a week or so. Bye, Zeke. Don't you 
You're always bad news to me. Get on your long underwear, quick. Why? You're going in the snow up to your, up to your, your way up, Mama, and hand me out my bare overcoat. Well, <laughs> useless. You're going someplace you won't want to sit down. It's so cold it'll freeze your hoose off. You wait and see. Think I'll go say howdy to the camera. This is my best overcoat. Well, I'd hate to see your worst one. <laughs> hello, Gus. Oh, hello there, Black. I'm certainly glad to see you back again. What are you wearing the heavy overcoat for? I'm getting all ready for that snow. No, we won't be there for days. Well, anyway, I'm going to keep warm while I can. Where's the camera out there? Oh, we left them four or five days back. Left them? Yes, all the horses give out. They couldn't go on. Fifteen, twenty wagons. They all went back to the fort. I hate it to tell you, son. See, why did you let the Camerons go? Uh -huh, not by doing, son. Black knows I savvy engine sign, so he sends me on ahead to scout. And when I come back, they'd all drop out. If engines can't on them wagons, they'll kill a lot of them. I'm afraid so, Black boy. The way's clear ahead, Zeke. You scout him. Yeah. I'm going back for the Camerons. Good luck, son. Get up, Jenny! There you sit. Get up, Jenny! I don't know who smells the bird. Hey, 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 oh, hey, hey. Here
some way that you'd come. I'd have been here a heap sooner if I could have. Say, Dave, you'd better cut off that trailer and throw everything into one wagon. All right. I'll hitch up old Roni and we'll see if we can get out of here. After you left, old Zeke told me the truth about some matters. Talk and slack and all. He did, eh? Sorry, I was so stupid. Now, don't worry, Miss Ruth. Things did look sort of queer. I should have known better. Well, we all get off on the wrong trail once in a while. We'll make it through, all right. So well, that's sick. Can I do something, Greg? No, I guess not. You ought to overtake those settlers in a week or so. Yeah, well, he'll down the both of us. You've got to get him tonight. But they can hear a shot at night. Uh, they can't hear a knife. They all know this knife of mine. Uh, well, here's the knife they don't know. No, no, no. I'm afraid of that knife. I know where you got it. Uh, it will get us in trouble, uh, sure. How? Because a dead man's knife is bad medicine. Yeah, stop that uh, dribble. Take the uh, and wait for the night. Like I have on Then it goes. Wait until he's bedded down. Then. You're going to ask God to take care of Brett Coleman? Oh, Zeke says that Brett Coleman can take care of himself. You overplayed your hand that time, Lopez. Zeke, 
guess that's all Ben Griswold's knife. Well, where'd you find it, boy? Lopez just left it sticking in my bedroom. Their having it makes it certain that Flack and Lopez did it. No question about it, boy. What did they do, Coleman? Killed my best friend. I've been on their trail ever since. That's the serious charge. You sure? We'll call a separate meeting in the morning to try him. You can call a settler's meeting to bury him. What do you mean? That I kill my own rat. They've jumped camp, Zeke, and I'm off on their trail. But you can't leave us here. You've got to see us through. What, boy? Maybe so, the way you all look at it. But those two men killed a man in cold blood, and they've got to pay. Not that I've got hatred in my heart, but that I'm the law out here, that's all. And the law is justice. Well, Zeke, I'll see him to the end of the trail. But then I'm picking up a new trail here. Under stands the great white mountain. And down below lies the valley I've told you about. Bowman, you have fulfilled our hopes. Neighbors, friends, it is fitting that we give thanks to the Almighty. Our Father, we thank thee for leading us to this land of promise, for guiding our footsteps safely through the dangers of our pilgrimage. In this valley of our dreams, we'll build our homes and serve thee, O Father, and our children's children shall praise thy name. Amen. The way is clear ahead, all gentle slopes. So drive down, my friends, and settle it. Lead the way. Zeke will lead the way down. Our trails fork here. You mean you are leaving us? There's a trail I've followed for over 3,000 miles now, and I'm heading back to pick it up again and follow it to the end. Bullman, you're the breed of man that would follow a trail to the end. Thanks, Bascom. Friend, we'll go on. Boy, there's two of them. Bag them. Now, I'm going with you. No, Zeke. You stay here and look after Ruth and her outfit. Rick, you're not leaving. Yes, Miss Ruth, I'm pulling out. They say you're going to hunt down Flack and Lopez. That's what I aim to do. But you can't do this awful thing. Take two lives. Frontier justice. Don't go, Rick, don't go. The job I've got to finish. Can't you see? It doesn't matter about them. I'm afraid for you. They'll kill you. everything in the world to me, Frank. I can't let you go. I can't. The thing has to be done. Someday, somewhere, our trails will cross again. Mustn't be a carrying on that away. He's gone. He'll never come back. Now, now, you just mustn't do this, miss. You'll have me a blubber in here pretty soon. I'm telling you that everything is going to be all right. When spring comes in that valley, he'll be tracking back again. I know that, boy. I know it. Now, come, come. Come on, miss.
legs are close to the knees. I can't get up. Yes, looks as if you're done for, Lopez. Look, don't go away and leave me, Black. What? Do you think I'm staying here? Well, then leave me a Black. Ah, uh, so oh, do you no good. You'll be froze to death in an hour. Black. Hey, help me. I'll get away. Black. 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 Don't let me die. I'm old. Stay with me. Black. Get up, it's my people. Black men, sir. Well, Lopez. It won't be long before you have company. I got a hankering to tail on down into Mexico. Old Bill Gillisham told me that them bad black guys gals is just full of money. Yeah. Think you're not really leaving him? Yeah, gal, I'm a pulling out. You's all nice and civil now. And this here valley's getting all together too civilized for me. Whenever I get more than three or four families within a hundred mile of me, I begin to feel kind of crowded. That's not why you're going, Bill. Why else, gal? Breck has never come back. You're going out to look for him. Now, wherever that boy Breck Coleman is at, he's a looking out for himself. Now, don't you fret about him. This is the anniversary of the, the day that the wagon train left for Missouri. The last time I had this on, I was sitting in the rigged cabin. And a rocking chair? Yes, honey girl. In a rocking chair. Reckon that's a panther. Yeah, it's a two-legged panther. The only kind would ever give me that Comanche yell as a signal. We might just as well start to unpack. What, ain't you going? No, you should go in now. He's only a bit up in the timber there, and he's headed this way. Lee, won't you stay over for the anniversary? Yes, gal, I'll stay. And I just recollected, I got a little present for you. Oh, Zeke, what is it? Well, a young fellow named Brett Coleman left it with me. And he told me to give it to you in case he didn't show up. Where is it, Dick? I hid it in the hollow of the big tree at the bend of the trail. You'll find it there. Thanks, Dick. I'll go get it. <laughs> 